This presentation is going to show you how to use the Intel performance primitives to perform FFTs or fast Fourier transforms on uh, audio data. So these are what are known as one-dimensional arrays or 1D arrays. IPP can actually perform Fourier transforms on 2D arrays and 3D arrays. Essentially what it's doing is performing an FFT on a 1D audio array is it's taking the audio data, which is actually in the time domain, and it's converting that data from the time domain to the frequency domain. So what you end up with is a list of frequencies in their relative strengths. Okay, and you'll, you'll, that, that relative strength will become important as we, as we take a look at what you see. So here I have a Visual Studio C++ program. It's uh, based on the uh, Microsoft Foundation classes, and this is a dialogue-based application. And here I'm just adding the, the frequencies. I'm adding to a combo box the frequencies of some uh, files that I have ready to load. And here I'm creating an FFT class, setting the data. And so that's, that's really all there is to sort of getting the job done. Let me just get down here. Uh, sending the data just uh, gets the current selection. And the FFT data is stored in this buffer. And what we have to do is we have to place it into a local, or a, what we have to do is place it into a, a buffer that this class can use then to draw the, the data on the screen. And this 30 is just, and dividing by 30 is just so that the, um, the data doesn't go away off the screen. It's just a way to sort of scale it back to uh, match the screen. And here we have the draw graph. Um, pretty simple. Just sets everything up, gets the width and height, and really just goes through and draws all the points, the data points, uh, based on the data that was um, passed to it. So here's the program as it runs. And you'll notice that there are a number of results, but this one in the middle is going to be the strongest frequency. Now, bear in mind, most audio um, data does not contain a single frequency. It contains a bunch of frequencies. Almost no audio data is going to have one single frequency. Take, for instance, if you're listening to a song, you might have the bass. Some of the percussion instruments might have pitch. Um, you have the guitar, the piano, the vocalist, and stuff. But but these frequencies will some fr frequencies will be more dominant than others. And as you can see in this picture, um, some frequencies that it found are more dominant than others. Also, even if you do have a, a single frequency, such as if you play the flute or the trumpet or something, so those are actually they you can you can hear with your ear a single frequency, but they have what are known as harmonics. And that's what actually makes the sound more complex and more, more pleasing. So here, this is a single frequency in this um, audio file that was loaded in. But it has harmonics, which are showing up as, as lesser frequencies. So I can go ahead and change the frequency. And notice how fast it takes more time to actually draw the, the data than it does to, to calculate the, the FFT. Okay, so now let's take a look at the FFT code, which is probably what you might be interested in. Um, here's a list of the WAV files that I'm loading in. Uh, swap in, that's because um, the audio data is not swapped Intel format. Uh, this loads the WAV file, whichever WAV file you want. But here is the actual FFT code. Setting up some pretty straightforward variables. Okay, these are going to be some pointers we're going, to, we're going to work with. Now we're going to allocate some buffers. IPP has its own allocation system. So you could be tempted to use malloc or something, malloc or calloc or something and so forth. But you want to use their allocation because it's going to be aligned correctly and it's going to be um, allocated the way they want, want it to be. Okay, so here's where we, we actually set the data that we got from the audio file. Data in is the audio data. And this is the actual, this P source is going to be the actual um, buffer that's going to be calculated upon. Okay, here we go. We get some sizes. We allocate all the buffers we're going to need. Then we initialize the FFT. Okay, that whole thing is there. Um, finally, this single line does the FFT. 
And IPP is very, very fast. You saw how fast it was when I changed frequencies. But um, I can remember back in the old days, FFTs would take, you know, several seconds each. Now, this is like several milliseconds that it's doing an FFT. Pretty easy to do. You get the magnitude. You check the results, and you free up the buffers you don't need anymore. Let me run this one more time. So what I would recommend, if you have a need for doing any FFTs, go ahead and download the IPP trial version. Uh, check it out. I don't think you're going to find a better uh, way to do Fourier transforms. That's it.